Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, uh, Secretary Vilsack. I've been watching you during the Obama administration and now, and I'll make an observation. Uh, you know what you're doing. <laughs> I appreciate that. Second, uh, I send greetings from Senator Leahy, who worked with you for uh, so many years and a long-standing member of this committee. Um, I want to just go through uh, what my Farm Bill priorities are briefly and just get your reaction. And at the end, I want to ask a question on behalf of my wonderful colleague, uh, Senator Fetterman. Uh, and uh, so let me get started. First of all, uh, keeping farmers on the farm, I really think that has got to be the goal. In Vermont, we're struggling, and we are the small and mid-sized farms that you just mentioned. Uh, and they want to pass their work on to the next generation. Uh, number one, uh, rural broadband reconnect, very important, obviously, and the Farm Bill has played a major role. Uh, do you consider that Congress should consider strengthening the reconnect program in the upcoming Farm Bill, and that we should maintain the 100-100 minimum broadband service required for a <coughs> proposed service area? Yes. Okay. Second, organic dairy, incredible challenges in Vermont. Uh, and uh, Sec Under Secretary Moffitt and I went to a, a, a sixth generation uh, organic farm. Uh, there's $100 million uh, of aid that's in, uh, available, and uh, it's desperately needed as a safety net to keep these folks going. When we had our meeting, an organic farmer uh, in the valley uh, asked the right question. Where's the money? Where's the money? The money is in the process. We're, we're in the process of streamlining the application. Um, and it's basically looking at 75% of the uh, future marketing costs of 2023. So we have to have a baseline uh, upon which to determine what that 75% is going to be factored against. So we're in the process of accumulating that. So I would expect and anticipate sometime this summer uh, that we'll have enough information to be able to begin uh, uh, receiving applications. Uh, farmers can take a look at uh, www.farmers.gov. That's where all the information about this particular program will be. Okay, I'll just tr try to convey the sense of urgency that these farmers had, and I know you know it, but I don't know that they have that much time, seriously. So I know you got to go through your procedures, but the Vermont legislature was actually considering trying to supplement or fill in until the money arrived. Well, so the clock is ticking here for these folks. So anything that we can do to speed that up, they really need the help. In addition, we also provided additional uh, support under the uh, volatility, uh, market volatility assistance program to dairy producers, and we also put resources behind the Dairy Innovation Center in Vermont. So there, that we are putting resources there to provide help and okay. assistance to get folks onto the. All right, I, I may be a little bit of a pest because there's such an existential reality, but I appreciate that. Uh, next is energy efficiency. The Rural uh, Energy Savings Program has been very, very helpful to many rural families uh, making their homes more efficient. Uh, and the question is, can we get more? There's a lot of, of funds available that are going to really help farmers and small businesses in rural communities cut down on their uh, energy bills. Uh, would more outreach and technical assistance uh, under our ESP help the program reach more of our rural communities? And would providing grants to entities that are helping administer loans broaden the reach of the program? We're looking for ways in which we can leverage our workforce. So anything that leverages that workforce that gets information out to people who need the program to be able to apply to the program, we would be supportive of. So local operations in Vermont that may be able to facilitate might be able to work with your department? It's similar to what we're doing with NRCS uh, and, and our FSA offices in terms of extending the reach of those offices. Okay. Forestry, important to a lot of us. Uh, how would additional funding uh, to support rapid response help USDA prevent the spread of invasive, invasive species? We have a real uh, issue with emerald ash borer in Vermont. Uh, you know, that's a tough issue. I, I would say that we also have to have research. We have to have a continued amount of research to be able to, to understand precisely what needs to be done to protect all of our species. Okay, so research means some funding, yes. and that's a priority. On the Rural Partnership uh, Program, um, do you agree that the institutes of rural partnership, such as the one established at the University of Vermont, and Senator Leahy played a major, major role in that, are a very effective uh, means to help 
to research and address the challenges that many of our rural areas, including Vermont, face. We're looking forward to seeing the results of the investments that have been made under Senator DeLay's leadership and direction. Okay. And then the organic certification cost share program. Uh, you know, the cost, in, in, you were, you, you, with the application consolidation, making it simpler, you're indicating an awareness of how tough that is. In the short term, what resources and legislative tools can Congress provide for the program to allow USDA to support producers that are seeking that organic certification? And would increasing the statutory cap on reimbursements from, say, $750 to 1500 help? That would help, but it, I think also you want to keep an eye on what we're doing under the Organic Transition Assistance Program. Uh, we're providing resources uh, to establish those who want to become organic, to uh, link them with existing organic producers so that they are mentored. We're establishing uh, additional uh, risk management uh, assistance to reduce the cost. NRCS has a new practice standard that is also going to allow equip money to be used to make it easier to do the to do the the tough conservation work that is required. And we're also looking forward to uh, figuring out ways in which we can expand yeah. market opportunities. So it's in, a lot of uh, Thank you very much. Uh, my last question is for my colleague, uh, Senator Fetterman. Um, he, as you mentioned, Chair of the Nutrition uh, Subcommittee. But his uh, question was about, is this. Last year, the department issued several proposed rules aimed at improving competition, transparency, and fairness in the livestock market. Senator Fetterman asked, how might, how might statutes such as the Packers and Stockyards Act be changed to further improve competition and fairness in the market? Well, I, I think the, the work that we're doing uh, for greater transparency, for uh, understanding uh, the, the, the role of the Packers and Stockyard Act in, in the face of discrimination or retaliation, uh, additional uh, support for the poultry industry, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, making sure that there's a level playing field, uh, understanding the scope of practice uh, and scope of, uh, the scope of practice within that bill, uh, all of that's going to happen over the course of the next year and a half. And I think once you see the benefit of that, you can make a determination whether there are additional statutory changes. But I think the, it's the regulatory process that is probably has the greatest opportunity for immediate impact. Okay, thank you. Chair Stabman, I'd like to submit the following letter of support from a coalition of rural broadband stakeholders regarding better broadband objectives in the Farm Bill, including the need for 100, 100 uh, symmetrical speeds. Without objection. So ordered. 